you suck at Modern Warfare 3, and it's not your fault at all, guys. Let's face it, all right? You're playing Modern Warfare 3, you're playing with one of your buddies. I'm just giving you an example here. You're doing really good. No matter what you're playing, you're playing Domination, Hardpoint, TDM, it doesn't matter. You have 20 kills and only 5 deaths. Your teammate, your buddy, he has 25 kills with 8 deaths. You guys are going off, but then you look at the scoreboard and you're still losing. What is going on? Well, the other 4 players on your team are doing really bad. They're all going like 7 and 18, and it's just not working out in your favor and Call of Duty basically put you guys with the worst players in the lobby in order to make you guys carry them and it's just really hard to do over and over again but don't worry because if you are one of those worst players in the lobby I got you guys covered with five easy things that you could change about your playstyle to become way better players and just do overall do so much better in the game now these are five things that I have done myself five things that I myself need to change and there's a lot to it and now guys quickly before we get into this video I need you to drop a like on this one I would truly appreciate that sub to the channel with those noties turned on we got to get a lot of subs here and also let me know down in the comments below what is the most amount of kills you've ever gotten in any single call of duty that ever existed i think me was black ops one 300 something kills i'm not even exaggerating it was crazy it was on newtown obviously bunch of kill streaks but yeah we just went crazy that game let me know what is the most kills you ever got let's get straight into this all right so let's move into number one all right so this is one that i struggled with for probably the better part of a few years okay so the awful reload addiction is one of the biggest things that actually gets a lot of people killed a lot of times all right and you don't focus on this you don't think of it you're just reloading your gun it's, it's an afterthought right but a lot of times you shoot someone let's say you have 30 bullets in your magazine you end up killing someone it takes seven or eight bullets to kill him so now you have 22 23 bullets in your magazine and then you just start reloading out in the open and then another enemy runs up on you but there's nothing you could do about it you could swap weapons but by the time you swap weapons you're probably dead you could yy or triangle triangle whatever you want to call it to try to get back to your weapon to cancel the reload but you're probably dead as well before you have time to do that so overall, a reloading addiction is something that gets a lot of people killed. And there's a few ways that you guys could change this. And one thing that I did, and I had to seriously think of doing it every single time I had to reload, was make sure that you're not out in the open. Kill a few people. If you still have 20 bullets in your mag, the reload is just an afterthought. It shouldn't be your main priority. You still have enough to win one or two more gunfights. So make sure that you guys find cover before actually going for that reload. Now, it's something that's so, so small, but it, it makes a it changes everything it's huge it's actually huge like it literally changes everything trust me guys start reloading start finding cover to reload reload only when you know there's no enemies nearby rather than just hitting that reload for every single thing you shoot one bullet you don't need to reload another thing that plagues a lot of players is the impatience that a lot of players have as well this is number two guys so do not be super impatient and i get it it's a fast-paced game you just want to get out there you want to get kills you want to draw people quickly you want to do what you got to do but you got to start playing a lot slower now let's say you're running around all right you're doing great you're killing dude after dude and then some random guy just starts shooting at you but you get to cover you hide behind a car you hide behind a building behind a wall you hide right away you're good to go but instead of waiting until you're fully healed, you jump right back out into the gunfight and just start shooting at the guy. Now the problem with this is that you were very impatient. You should have waited to heal a bit before actually getting back into that gunfight because the problem here is the enemy shooting at you is very patient. So let's say he's standing behind a little head glitch, he's standing behind a little garbage or something. He starts shooting at you, you run behind cover, he knows you're coming right back out. He has his gun aim in there, He's waiting for you to pop back out so he could drop you right away. Now, here is the big issue. He already has his sights exactly where you're going to be. So, whether you heal or not, you're already at a disadvantage. Most of the time, you don't heal. You run right back out. You're one or two shots away from dead. And then you blame the game. You're like, oh, the game sucks, blah, blah, blah. It's unfair. It's not. You should have healed. You should have waited. And that's where stim shots come into play a lot. And that's why I always recommend running stim shots. Because if you are impatient, I'm very impatient, you can just pop a stim, get back out there, get back into the gunfights, and start doing what you got to do again. So, guys, trust me. Do not engage in gunfights that you have no way to win. And just be patient, play it slow, do what you gotta do, and I wouldn't even push back out to the guy shooting at you, I would just get away from him. Let, let him sit there and wait for you the whole time, and then kind of run around, go, go around, get him from behind, do what you gotta do. Now another thing, is that people don't use the gear that they put on their own classes, which to me just makes doesn't, doesn't make sense. Now, I'm not talking about the, the primary or the secondary, that doesn't matter. I'm talking about the lethals and the tacticals, for example, okay? A lot of people make these class setups, but they never touch what they put on. 
to their class setups. Now, let me ask you guys something. How many times do you actually use a lethal or a tactical within the game? If you do it once a life, that is perfect. That's amazing. That's great. You're doing good. But if you do it once a game or once every few lives, you're just wasting your lethal and tactical. Now, one thing that I use a lot is stim shot. I'll use that every single life. Whenever I get the chance, that stim is going to be used. That is not a waste. But another thing is, if I, I have throwing knives, I use them in certain situations. I know when to use them. That's the great thing. But if you have like a Semtex or, or a regular frag grenade or something like that, these things are amazing because not only are they actually lethals, but they could be used as something to help you guys out as well they could be used as indicators to let you know if there's enemies in certain areas they could be used as little ping little radar pings i guess if you want even though it won't ping the actual radar you will see if someone's in a certain area let's say someone's in a building but you're unsure pop a grenade in there pop a stun in there do what you got to do you're going to get that little hit marker if somebody is in there and it does hit them and it kind of tells you right away that there is an enemy there but another thing that you guys should be doing is let's say you shoot at someone and then they run behind cover well instead of pushing them directly what you could do is you could stun them and then push them they're already weak so you should be able to get them easily or you can nade them as well if you have nades on just make sure that you're, you guys are using any of your gear to your advantage don't, don't just let your gear sit there and do nothing for you there, there's no point of having it do nothing for you these are in the game because they are very important and i really recommend using them so make sure you guys are using them at every single chance you get all right now another thing that i want to talk about is using certain weapons for certain situations okay a lot of people will run the same gun on every single map and to me that just doesn't make sense you, you don't want to be the guy who's running around with a wsp swarm on the largest map in the game it just doesn't make any sense you it, it, I, I i don't get it it's not going to do you any good there's gonna be a lot of cases where you get into a gunfight at mid-range and you're probably gonna die five out of ten times that that's not good odds you you want to win nine out of ten gunfights actually you want to win ten out of ten but we all know that's impossible but yeah just start using the right weapons for the right maps you're playing a large map that's where a sniper an lmg an ar any of those will come in hand you're playing a super tiny map like let's say shipment or something like that that's where maybe a shotgun will <laughs> don't, don't use shotguns i forget i said that don't you i hate shotgun players but smgs smgs will definitely come into hand on those maps pistols even could come into hand, hand come into hand hand that doesn't make sense could come in handy on those maps as well so just make sure that you guys are using the right guns for the right maps and, and what i'm gonna say is please don't meta chase okay guys i i know there's there's one or two guns in the game that are going to be better than every single gun in the game, but not every single person is good with those guns. You might not be good with the meta weapon, but you're going to be forcing yourself to use something that you're not good at just because it's the best gun in the game. Whereas if you use the second best gun in the game that you're really good at using, you would play so much better. You would do so much better. So guys, do not meta chase. It's not worth it in my opinion. And I just, I, I would never recommend it. All right, let's move on to the last thing I want to talk about here. And that is your play style. A lot of people do not use movement whatsoever. And this is obvious because when you start shooting at them, they're just standing still. They're shooting back, but they're just standing still. These are the easiest targets to hit. I love it when there's a dude who just stands still in a gunfight, all right? You got to do at least the bare minimum, guys. You got to at least strafe in a gunfight, okay? That is literally the bare minimum. Don't just freeze up and stand still and start shooting. That, 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 you should always be moving that left stick if you're playing on, on a controller. If you're playing mouse and keyboard, you want to always be moving A and D and all that kind of stuff. Just strafe, all right? There's four different things that I would recommend doing in gunfights, so let's talk about them. The first one is a jump shot. Jump shot paired with assault gloves is going to make you a boss at the game, okay? Like, you're just going to be really good. The assault gloves, when you jump shot, are going to increase your ADS speed, and they're going to increase your accuracy. So if you start shooting at someone, you're going to be pretty accurate. It's going to be easy to jump shot them, and I recommend doing that a lot. Just keep practicing jump shots over and over and over again. And then the opposite is drop shotting. Do that as well. Drop shotting is cool as well. It's actually very hard to hit someone who, who actually knows how to drop shot properly. If you're shooting at someone mid-range, close range, drop shot easily. Set your controller up to where you don't even have to move your thumb off R3. You could drop shot while holding R3. And that's just going to make you a lot better. It's going to be a, you're going to be a really hard target to hit. And it's just worth it in my opinion. Next off is strafing. This is the easiest thing you could do. On your class setup, 
throw a lot of attachments that give you ADS movement speed, okay? This is going to help you guys out a lot, especially if you don't want to jump shot or drop shot. Strafing isn't going to help you out a lot. You're going to move left to right, you're going to be a lot harder to hit, and as you're moving left to right, you're actually also increasing your rotational aim assist. You're moving that left stick, you're moving that right stick, your aim assist is going to be stronger, everything works out better. And the last thing, when you're in super close quarters, if you're right behind a door and you know someone else is on the other side of that door, right near it, or really close to it, slide. Slide. You're going to be really fast, it's going to be hard for them to track you that close while you're sliding, and then as you're sliding, just hip fire them. And she's going to help you guys out a lot. But that's going to be it for today's video, man. If you guys did enjoy it, I would truly appreciate a like on this one. Sub to the channel if those notice turned on. Thank you guys for watching. My name is Nick, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Let me know down in the comments below your highest kill game ever in any COD. I'll catch you guys later. Peace.